I want to share with you the gospel, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the Apostle Paul defines the gospel as this, that Jesus Christ was crucified, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, defeating death, paying in full for the sins of all mankind. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Now, how do you respond to the gospel? It's ABC simple, known as the ABCs of salvation. The A is for admit or acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you've fallen short of God's perfect standard of righteousness. Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, the death penalty, which Jesus came and paid for instead of us. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The B is for believe in your heart. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And then the C is for call upon the name of the Lord or confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10, which also says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And lastly, Romans 10, 13 says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, I implore you today, before you leave this beautiful church today, to do so. If you're watching online, I implore you, do not put this off. We are at the end. The time is at hand. Please stand. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for telling us in your word, very specifically, what the world is going to look like and be like at the time of the end. Because as we look around, it is very clear without question, really, that it's exactly as you said it would be. Lord, I pray for anyone who is weary, discouraged, longing for your return, that you would encourage and strengthen their hearts. And just as a reminder to them, would you, as only you can, Fill them afresh with this hope that no matter what they go through, you're going to get them through it until you come. And for those who have never called upon you, Lord, I pray that today it would be the day of their salvation as we all long for and anticipate our wedding day to you, Jesus, as our bridegroom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our studio from our office here in Galilee in Israel. And uh, a, a very packed um, update we have. Uh, before I start with the prayer, just so you know, another major explosion in southern Iran in another energy facility. Two within 24 hours. The Iranians are very, very confused. If that's not enough, Ahmadinejad, who used to be the president of Iran and was denied access to run for president again, is revealing some very, very, very interesting things about corruption there. And he might even not live to see 
the next few days. So a lot of stuff is going on, but I want to start with a prayer and then we'll talk about the new government that is going to come in uh, to power in Israel, what it means. And we're going to try and ask ourselves a big question. How close are we to Gog and Magog? So, Father, we thank you that we don't have to rely on our feelings. We don't even have to rely on what we see. We need to rely on what you promised in your word. And uh, we know that faith comes by hearing, but we also know that it's the um, evidence of things not seen. So, Father, we ask that you will empower us with courage and, and, and understanding of the times and the seasons. And uh, we ask that you, through your world, will um, unveil everything that is going on and give us a lot of um, a lot of uh, encouragement and hope. We thank you and we bless you in the name of the Holy One of Israel, Yeshua. We pray, Amen, Amen. So again, Shalom, everyone. It's Amir Tzafati. I'm live from Galilee, from Israel. Last night at 11:25 p.m., less than 24 hours ago, um, the opposition leader uh, in Israel called the, the president of Israel and said, I managed to form a government. And the proposed government, I'll show it to you in a few seconds. But Israel, I want you to know, Israel right now may be strong, safe, secure, prosperous, but it is politically very unstable. And as you're going to see in a few seconds, Morally, it's in a sharp decline. This is a picture of what the new Israeli government should look like. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, nothing in what you see makes sense. The left never wanted to sit with the right. The Arabs never wanted to sit with either one of those. And to put a man to be prime minister who only has six seats out of the 120, to put him as prime minister, it's a joke. It's not even constitu It's not even democratic, if you really think about it. However, all the only one thing, the one thing that glues the left and those parties on the right and that center and even the Arabs is one thing: we don't like Benjamin Netanyahu. I bet that the hatred for a man is greater than their love for their country. And because, why am I saying that? Because every one of those parties is betraying its own ideology by sitting with the other. And uh, it's quite interesting. Everyone amongst their supporters is okay with that as long as Netanyahu is ousted. That reminds me of what happened in America not too long ago when the hatred to a sitting president was much greater than the love for the country. Everybody wants a change. And this is how they call this government, the change government. I want to sh remind you, who is the one that had that slogan, change? This is, what, uh, this is what America had. The 45th was running with that ticket. 44th, excuse me, was running with the ticket change. And that change was not necessarily for good, if you remember. It was actually one of the worst eras in the history of America. And we are at the, at the very beginning of, I believe, one of the darkest chapters of the state of Israel. Look, this is a very, very difficult evening for me. I may put up a nice facade of, uh, I'm confident, I'm strong, I'm happy, I'm excited, but I'm crying in my heart right now because my country is is becoming something that I can't even recognize. And I want to sh I want to tell you something, that change that they want, that change that they're looking forward is is not the change that is going to make our country closer to God. It's not going to make our country better and and I am not going to be as proud as I used to be in what we have, who we are, and how we do things. And I, I will be honest with you guys, from now on, things will be different in the way I present everything. In fact, 
it's the good thing is I'm going to have to rely more and more and more on the promises of God for Israel rather on the performance of Israel as, as we speak. By the way, Proverbs chapter 24, verses 21 to 22, speaking of change, take a look at what this uh, verse is actually saying. My son, fear the Lord and the king, he says. Do not associate with those given to what? Change. Why? For their calamity will rise suddenly, and who knows the ruin those two can bring. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, change, <laughs> if it's for godly things, is great. But unfortunately, I want to say it's not going to be that way. In fact, let me give you a short list of the new changes that this new government is going to do. One, legalizing marijuana. Two, legalizing the unauthorized construction of homes of Arabs in the Negev. Uh, I mean, they're going to bring build more and more, taking more and more land so Jews will not build, promoting same-sex marriage, protecting the compromised Supreme Court from being uh, changed or replaced. Ladies and gentlemen, this, what we are going to go through in Israel, right? And by the way, not to mention, you can Google and find out what was going on in Jerusalem today, in Jerusalem today. That adds to everything you just, you just read. That's the change. I can't believe that a yarmulke-wearing, Orthodox Jew is, is going to lead uh, a government uh, made of, of you, you, you learn quickly who are those people. If you go back to the slide um, of uh, the government, you're going to find out that besides the left and the right and supposedly the center, which is globalist and, 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 and very much uh, progressive, I want you to know that Ra'am, the four, the four seats are on top. Uh, this is the Israeli branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Ram Party is the Israeli branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, make no mistake, this is the, the party of the Islamic movement in Israel. You know that the Muslim Brotherhood, since they were established in 1928 in Egypt, they were outlawed, outlawed by most Arab countries. <laughs> In, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, in the UAE, in Bahrain, in Oman, they are outlawed. They, they are not even allowed to operate. And here, ladies and gentlemen, that only one part of the Muslim brother in Israel is outlawed. The part that is in the Ra'am one is, is actually legal. And they are very, 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 very uh, smart, may I say. They're using a very old Islamic uh, way of uh, mode of operation. It's called takia. Takia is basically when a Muslim is allowed under the Sharia law to lie, which means when there is a majority and the majority says something, as a minority, you're allowed to assimilate to the majority and supposedly agree with him on certain things in order to promote your agenda. And when the time comes and they're weak and you're strong enough, boom, you make your move. I mean, the, the, the leaders of the Islamic movement in Israel realize that the Orthodox Jews, the religious Jews, the Hasidic Jews, they've been part of the government for years, although they don't really share the values of the rest of the Israelis. The reason why they're there is to represent their people and to get money and uh, budgets. And so they said, well, let's do the same. We'll agree with everything, sit with them, get billions of shekels in budgets to for our own people, and yet uh, we are not committed to this country. We're not committed to, and look, we just had riots in, in, in the streets of Israel where Muslims in the name of Islam killed Jews for nothing, for no reason. And that same Ram justified it, saying this was a legitimate uh, uprising. Can you imagine? Not to mention, by the way, that again, they, they emphasize the Islamic, not the national thing. So, you know, any Muslim around the world can join, you know, our, our effort. So I, I, I need you to understand, I am crying, lamenting and grieving and mourning in my heart and from within. This is uh, the, the, the fort has been breached. The fortress is, is, is falling as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, when I look at that, how the Muslim Brotherhood are now having a foothold in the Israeli government, you know, I'm reminded of the, of, of the book of Nehemiah. 
In the book of Nehemiah, if you remember chapter 13, remember there was, uh, 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 of course, uh, um, Tobiah the Ammonite, who was the Ammonite official. He was the, actually the king of the Ammonites, Ammon, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the neighbors across the river, uh, Jordan. And uh, basically, Tobiah attempted to hinder Nehemiah's effort to rebuild Jerusalem. Because in his mind, uh, Jerusalem is not is not for us. And after the Babylonian exile that happened, and of course, he took over the storerooms of the temple for his own use. And when Nehemiah came back to Jerusalem, look what he said. He said, and I came to Jerusalem and I discovered the evil that Eliashiv had done for Tobiah in preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me bitterly. See how I'm grieving right now. And then he says, therefore, I threw all the household goods of Tobiah out of the room. And then I commanded them to cleanse the rooms. And I brought back into them the articles of the house of God with the grain offering and frankincense. Ladies and gentlemen, that religion doesn't want us to, to be in Jerusalem, doesn't want us to have a temple in Jerusalem, doesn't, doesn't want us to even be here in Israel, doesn't want us to be the rulers of this country. And having, uh, giving them a foot, foot, footprint, a uh, foothold, a uh, stronghold, some some kind of a hold in our government. It is beyond stupid. I can't believe we do that. But again, progressive mindset is just different mindset. So Israel, yes, we are having strong economy. Yes, we're having strong military. Yes, we're having great, um, you know, uh, medical uh, and, and cybersecurity and agriculture. Everything is great. We're safe, secure. We prosper but we are morally declining and politically weak. Make no mistake when there is a very strong political leader. People are afraid. People have reverence. People don't, you know, they, they know not to mess up with you. When, and you know exactly, the Middle East became so much in unrest ever since the 46 got into office. Why? Because of they smell weakness. And Israel right now, by doing this, is broadcasting weakness, is broadcasting, um, you know, we are not having any spine, nothing. It's just heartbreaking to see my country giving, giving in to globalism, giving in to progressive mindset, giving in to this change, but it changes for bad, not for good. And make no mistake... When people around us see that, they know that their time to make a move is probably around the corner. Now, I'd like to remind you, folks, that uh, when we look into Gog and Magog, the, the war described in Ezekiel 38 and 39, we remember there is the leader, which is Rush, and Rush is Russia of today. And uh, that leader has to come, somehow lead the assault or the strike or the invasion from the north. And uh, Russia is uh, everything but quiet lately. I, in, 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 uh, on the coast of Syria, Russia has an airbase called Khmeimim. And in that airbase, take a look what they did recently. On the right-hand side, you see the runway. On the left-hand side, you see the extended runway. You see how they actually worked hard to extend it. Why? because they need it to be good and long and suitable enough for more than just certain uh, aircrafts. Take a look at what has been seen in the last few days in the skies of Syria. We're talking about the supersonic bomber, Tupolev um, uh, TU, uh, take a look at the, uh, that, yeah, the TU-22M, supersonic, long-range, strategic, and maritime strike bombers. They landed in Hmeimim in Syria. Why would Russia want supersonic, long-range bombers in Syria? I am only thinking of a plot. I'm not sure if you see the same thing. And Iran, as I just mentioned in the very beginning, Iran is going through a lot. Iran is Persia in Ezekiel 38. 
And I know some of you are wondering, what about Elam? Elam is just a small part of Iran. The prophecy of Elam has been fulfilled, but Persia as a whole, Iran as a whole, is going to join a coalition that will strike Israel because they know they cannot do it all by themselves. They have all the equipment. They've got rotten uh, government. And Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who used to be the president, who wanted to run again for president, it was denied access to run. He couldn't even apply for pres for candidacy. He just said, I am about to unveil secrets of some terrible corruption within our security services. He basically says, this is why Israel managed to, to go so deep into us because we we are compromised and he's about to expose people. And I will tell you something, the Ayatollahs don't like what he's doing because he's basically taking all the dirty laundry outside I'm, I'm not even sure if Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is going to live through the next uh, few days or weeks. He might have an accident. I'm not sure because he is now a threat. Iran is getting hit big time. Some of you watched the breaking news from yesterday. Take a look. The largest naval ship on the left, um, as you can see, their largest, by the way, it's, it's, it's a... It's not a tax ship. It's not a warship. It's more to, to take supply from place to place. But it also has helipad and it also has some cannons on it. And it's, it has some very, very sophisticated systems. Well, something caused a great explosion to cause on the right hand side the sinking of that ship off the coast of Oman. And it's gone. Yesterday, people could see the smoke rising and the pride of the Navy of Iran is gone. And what you see now on the screen. This is an explosion yesterday in, uh, in the suburb of Tehran. The oil refineries that, by the way, continue to burn as we speak right now. And I didn't have time to upload more pictures from what happened an hour ago in Abhaz. Another, if you follow me on Telegram, if you download the Telegram messengers and follow me, you're going to see I uploaded the video from what happened an hour ago in Tehran. And a, a couple days ago, an M5, the um, F5, excuse me, um, an old uh, jet uh, from the late 1950s crashed. Two of those pilots, uh, you know, died also. Iran is having so many uh, blows and difficulties in the last few days and months, and they know that someone is behind it. In fact, somebody said, an investigator said today that Israel is behind the sinking of the, uh, uh, the, the ship yesterday, which is quite phenomenal. Now, let's move to uh, that part in Ezekiel that is called Gomer and the House of Togarma, which is Turkey of today. Ladies and gentlemen, Turkey of today, you may not hear much, but they are very, very much in trouble. They're not doing well in Syria. They're not doing well in Libya. They're not doing well in northern Iraq. And if that's not enough, with 19% interest, they still bleed. And there, take a look at this chart, because their currency is against the dollar, is losing value. And more and more and more Turkish liras are now for one US dollar, 8.61 as of yesterday. That's all time low as far as the, 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 the value of their currency. Erdogan needs a war and he needs a war urgently in order to revive his economy. Believe it or not, wars revive economies. <laughs> you know, you have to restore things. You have to buy things. You have to sell things. You have to use. You, you take over stuff. You could have spoils of war. Believe it. I mean, this is quite amazing. And, and Turkey, so Turkey in the position to want to go uh, after um, whoever. Iran wants to obviously uh, avenge everything that is happening. Russia is around the corner with heavy bombers, supersonic bombers even there. And, 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 and what's going on in Syria, which, by the way, is the common thing for all of those countries I just mentioned. Assad was just elected once again in a fiasco. It was a circus. Take a look. I want you to see those three pictures. That's from the uh, elections. First of all, <laughs> the one in the middle, you see a soldier voting 27 times. He takes his uh, thumb and he's just putting it on so many different uh, ballots. <laughs> That's, I mean, we have it on camera. Second, 
Take a look on the left. They vote with blood. Look how sick that society is. She is poking his chest to get some blood so she can take it and put it on the ballot. On the right, the guy voted with blood uh, with his thumb. But, but by the way, is it legal to show who you voted for? No. <laughs> but he did it, so it's an insurance policy. Hey, don't come against me. I voted for Assad. This is, look, everybody should see that. It was a fiasco. It was a theater. He got 95%, although, you know, <laughs> people voted there uh, by the, I mean, it, it's crazy. And ladies and gentlemen, why is it so prophetic? Because Assad is the insurance policy for Russia to stay, for Iran to stay, and for Syria, to, for Russia to, uh, excuse me, for Turkey to continue what he's doing. Russia wants him to stay. They can't stand him, but they know that he must stay in power, so they will stay where they are. Iran loves him because he allows them in. They're both Shiites. So Assad is again, in, you know, he controls 70% of his land but he has no control over his energy sources and he has no control over his military. Um, and Russia realized, look, uh, Assad is too weak. Um, are we going to start our own Syrian army, the fifth column, the fifth brigade? And they're basically, one is Sunni, one is Shiite. Both are Syrian, but they hate each other. guts. But Russia is doing that. All of that to tell you that Israel being weak politically, and morally declined is in a vulnerable situation. Look, I told somebody, I believe we're entering into the last phase of the existence of Israel as a sovereign democracy. Make no mistake, biblically, biblically, Israel cannot remain a sovereign state when the Antichrist will enter into the city and rule from Jerusalem, the Jews will flee to the desert. Remember, the end of Israel's independence. And we will only come back when Jesus comes back, and we will then even then not be democracy, but we will be a theocracy. God will reign from Jerusalem. So Israel's present democratic status sovereign state with its own military, its own government, its own capital, its own everything, is, is with expiration date. And, and God, we needed that. We needed to be what we are right now to get the Jews to come back, to get the land back, to get Jerusalem back, to be what we are, to get to the point. But we're falling apart morally. We're falling apart politically. And this is when the enemy can attack. And by the way, there are two Gog and Magogs in the Bible, and many people are confused about it. There is one of Ezekiel, and it's known as Gog from the land of Magog. And there is one of, of, of Revelation, and that's talking about Gog and Magog. Now, is it the same war? Absolutely not. And I will show you four major uh, differences between the, 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 the two of them. The first one... In the battle of Ezekiel 38 and 39, the armies come primarily from the north and involve only a few nations of the earth. It talks about Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, and Sudan. That's it. However, in battle of Revelation 20, it will involve all nations. So armies will come from all directions, not just from the north. The second thing. There is no mentioning of Satan in the context of Ezekiel 38 and 39. But in Revelation 20, verse 7, it says, clearly, it places the battle at the end of the millennium with Satan as the primary character. Number three, in Ezekiel 39, verses 11 to 12, it states that the dead will be buried for seven months and there would be no need to bury the dead if the battle in Ezekiel 38 and 39 is the one described in Revelation. I mean, it's the end of the millennial kingdom. Why? That's it. <laughs> We're about to have eternity. Why do we need to bury them for for, for that long? And, and, and so for that's why it, it won't be immediately following Revelation 20. And that's uh, because that's when we have the great white throne judgment then. And then, th so the current or present heaven and earth are destroyed in Revelation. 
and replaced by new heaven, new earth, of course, in Revelation 21. And there obviously will be a need to bury the dead only if the battle takes place in the early part of the tribulation or just before, for the land of Israel will be occupied for another thousand years. And the length of the millennial kingdom, of course, is that thousand years. So, so you see, even that part doesn't make sense if it's the same war. The last one, the fourth one, is the battle of Ezekiel 38 and 39 is used by God to bring Israel back to him. Remember, God is the one who wins. And in the Revelation 20, Israel has already been faithful for God for a thousand years. Remember, all Israel will be saved when Jesus will come back. And when Jesus reigns, the Jews are faithful. There's no need to win the battle for Israel. Remember, uh, we're talking about those in Revelation 20, verses 7 to 10, who are rebellious, are destroyed without any more opportunity for repentance. So that's a different story. This is the battle between the non-believers against the, the people of God. So, so I will say this. The, the battle of, Armag of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel is the one that talks about the specific countries. And Gog is the leader of, 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 uh, from the land of Magog, Rosh, from Russia, Meshach, and Tuvan, and all that. Whereas the spirit of that Gog and Magog will be at the end of the millennial kingdom. When the enemies of God wants to come against the people of God, and God, of course, will destroy them. And I want to remind you, as far as Israel is concerned, the Bible says the first comes the physical restoration of Israel. And Israel has been restored physically. Ezekiel 37 says that God is going to bring the Jews back from the land where they are buried from the Europe from their graveyard, and he will take us and place us in our own land. Read Ezekiel 37 all the way to the end. I, the Lord, he says, have spoken it and performed it. God brought the Jews back to their land, not somebody else's land. He promised, he spoke, and he performed. That's the physical restoration. But the spiritual restoration, ladies and gentlemen, will come at the end. And that's going to have to be, unfortunately, after Israel will suffer and we are watching right now the beginning of the era of a country that is committing suicide spiritually and morally and again you're going to see it's 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 getting it's getting bad zechariah um excuse me ezekiel 36 says in verses 24 25 he says for i will Take you from among the nations, I'll gather you out of all countries, and I'll bring you into your own land. That's the physical. And look what he says. Then, after you're in your land, after you're strong, you're safe, you're secure, you're prosperous, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Zechariah 12 says, I will pour on the house of David and the house of on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look at me. Look, when the Lord will restore them spiritually, it's at the moment when they look at Jesus returning. They will look at me whom they pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for the uh, firstborn. And I want to tell you, folks, where you are in the first will determine where you will be in the second. In other words, there's a good chance, very good chance, that the believers will be out of here before this war. And we will be out of here because this war is for Israel and for God to deal with Israel. But at the very second Gog and Magog is when we already live in Jerusalem for a thousand years and the enemy and Satan and his minions wants to attack and destroy us. When you are not in the first, you will surely be in the second. When you present in the first, it could be that you um, will be in the second. Look at this. Uh, look at this chart that I have. The time of the Gentiles versus the time of Israel, and the rapture is right between the restoration of the land according to Ezekiel thirty-six. The rescue of the remnant of Israel, according to Ezekiel 37. The return back to the land, according to Isaiah 43. Jerusalem is back in Jewish hands, as we know. Then the rapture, and then God is going to deal with Israel. Gog and Magog, 
and the peace of, of the Antichrist that will follow it. The tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel, that's Israel's salvation eventually will lead to Israel's salvation. The, the rescue of Israel in the second coming and all Israel will be saved according to Romans 11. So take a look. God, you know, there's a very, very clear distinction between those two and the rapture is in between. And I want to tell you something. We as believers witnessed the physical restoration of Israel. But we as believer, as believers, will 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 be out of here to see that tribulation that will lead to Israel's salvation and to their spiritual restoration. It's important that you understand that. And I have a, I have a question to you. Are you excited about the first Gog and Magog? Or are you excited about your second Gog and Magog? And why am I saying that? We don't need to be excited about the first. We, 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 we might not be here. We, we, we are not here to be excited about Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, and Sudan attacking Israel. We're not here to be excited about that. What we need to be excited about, what we need to be ready for is the second one. Because we want to be believers who will be taken, who will come back with Jesus, who will reign with him for a thousand years, and who will be attacked by Satan and his minions. And then God will, you know, destroy Satan, send him down to the lake of fire. And that's it. It's over. You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, our excitement now is to be out of here even before Ezekiel. And our excitement is that we will eventually may experience a Gog and Magog, but the second one, because we are God's people, because we were chosen, because we are his, because we come back to reign and rule with him, because of all of that, we will be there as the subject of the attack of Satan himself and the minions that he gathered from the four corners of the world. You know, it's so easy to get caught up right now with depression, to lose hope. Look, I, <laughs> I, I, I've been counseling and uh, comforting Americans since January. And now it knocked on my door. Now that same progressive mindset, that same spirit of change, that same spirit of freedom, that same hatred towards a God-given leader, more than a love for your own country. That same mindset is here. My fortress has been breached. And more than ever before, excuse me, more than ever before, I want to say that we need to hold on to our spiritual passport, to our heavenly passport. I, I honestly am not proud to say I'm Israeli. With a government like that, I am very much not proud to say where I'm from. I'm holding on to my passport of heaven. I am holding on, not only because this is what I'm really proud to be part of, but I also holding on to it because very soon it's going to be stamped. And I want you to know what we are watching right now is the moral de in, de decline and the spiritual decline and, and the political instability and the spirit of of, 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 it's mad. It's crazy. Uh, we see all of that, that everything that happened in America and Europe and other places is now here. It made a landfall. The demon of progressive mindset, the demon of that change has made a landing here. And I will tell you, I am not here to sow depression and uh, lack of hope. In fact, I will, I'm giving you hope. Look, our hope is not here. It's there. But I want you to know that uh, biblically, when you look at what this world is going to become, what Israel has to go through, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. I'm not surprised. I didn't want to see it coming, but I knew it's coming. I didn't want to experience it, but I knew it's coming. I knew I will have to. And here I am. I want to encourage all of you not to lean on the politics of this world, on the horses and the chariots of this world. You are going to be disappointed. 
Look, in America, unless they change the election system, it's never, ever going to be different. In Israel, the same. You see, once that demon is taking over the powerhouse, it won't let go. It will take over and it will shoot its arms all over and it will choke it. That's the demonic nature of what we're watching right now. This is what we see. And we see that in America. We see that in Europe. We can see that in Israel right now. And, you know, as much as I want things to change and, and go back to what it was and, and, to, and to be national and to be, and to be patriot and to be, I can see that there is a moral and spiritual decline. I see that. When, when, when a yarmulke wearing person betrays his own people and says, and does exactly opposite of what he said. And he is allowing the, the support and, the, and, and, and the, the, the fellowship of the Islamic Brotherhood in his own government. Then what am I going to say? Ladies and gentlemen, the, the, there, are very, there are some people that are shocked. There, there are a lot of Orthodox Jews, a lot of you know, conservative Jews, Israelis, we're shocked. We, we are we're speechless but unlike them i know the end i know the end of the book i know the winning side i know that my redeemer lives i know that when jesus said to thomas hey blessed are i mean you you believe because you see but blessed are those who who believe and they don't see now we've seen so far everything from god in israel now we have to hold on to the things we don't see we need to hold on to, to the rapture. We need to hold on to, to um, the, the Bema seat. We need to hold on to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We need to hold on to the return to reign and rule with him for a thousand years. We need, you know, if you indeed were raised with Christ, then seek those things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, not the things on earth. That's Colossians 3. That's what, this is what we need to do. That's how we need to, you know, more than ever before, I'm so energized more than ever right now to go out and share and to, because look, <laughs> that's the only thing left for us to do right now. I'm not putting my hope. Look, I don't think things are going to get better here. I don't think things are going to get better in America. I, I don't want to depress you. I'm looking at the Bible. I'm looking at the world that Jesus himself described at the end times. Don't be don't be disheartened. By the way, the fact that it's going to be bad doesn't mean you have to stop doing good. <laughs> the opposite. You, When he comes back, he wants to find us doing the Father's business. Not to sleep as others do. To be sober and to be awake. We need to be with hope. You know, Paul said, you know, my time has come. And I'm about to receive the crown of righteousness that the Lord will give me on that day, not only to me, but to all those who love his appearing. We need to love his appearing. We need to think about his appearing. We need to long for his coming. We need to look forward to his coming. We need to uh, uh, expect his coming anytime. We need to, uh, you know, pray about it and, and, and sing for it and, and, and preach it. Look, more and more videos will now emerge and try to confuse people. There is no rapture. There is no, I mean, there is no millennial kingdom. There is no, you know, you, you're not going to be in, in heaven for the beam. It, it will tell you, hey, things are all as, as, as they are always. You know, don't, you know, all of these, they, they will try to steal you. First, they steal the government here, and then they steal the only hope you have. So you will completely fall asleep. And that's why the Bible says, don't fall asleep as others do. For the night is far spent, the day is at hand. That's what the Bible said. And don't, I mean, even though it's night, let's be behave like the sons of the day, not of the night. So when the world is going towards progressive mindset and globalist mindset and, and, and liberal mindset, don't. You need to be like the sons of the day, not the sons of the night. So if you're asking me, Amir, so if there is no point, uh, if we won't have any more great government, so why, why doing good? Because that's who we are. Because that's what he wants us 
to do when he comes to take us. He wants to find us doing his business, the Father's business, not our falling asleep. And I, it's important that you understand that. It's so important more than ever. Look, I'm grieving. I'm grieving. I'm crying. You, I'm not showing it now. You don't need to see it. My pillow will have it. But I'm also more than ever before filled with so much energy to share the good news, the hope that we have in Christ, and that the, that we live in the end times. She, people need to know that everything we see has been foretold, and we know also who is the winner. So I want to encourage all of you. You know, we're very close to the first Gog and Magog, but we might not even be here to see it because what we need to focus on is the second one where we want to be. That's what we want to be part of. We want to be attacked for being the people of God, not for being a citizens of Israel attacked by Russia, Iran, and Turkey, and Sudan, and Libya. No, we want to be out of here before that. So just don't be excited about a war of Ezekiel. Be excited about the rapture that comes before. <laughs> That's my point. My point is there's so much going on. Look, I feel more honored to live in this time period than any other time period since the time of Jesus. There's some more stuff happening now before our very eyes than any other time period since the time of Jesus. So I really want to encourage you to stay in the word, stay in, in prayer, and to, and to be a beacon of light and hope and, uh, <laughs> and not, not, to be, uh, not to be distressed and dismayed and... and, and and, and uh, look, I know it's hard, but this is when the Holy Spirit gets to act in us. You know, blessed is the man who puts his, whose trust is in you. And in, in, when the summer is, is, is hot, you will be like a, a, a tree by the springs of water. And when the leaves, you know, uh, uh, if everything else dries out, your leaves will stay green. Because the nourishing of everything in you is the Holy Spirit. Nothing else. I want to encourage you. Download Telegram Messenger. Follow me on Telegram uh, for daily news. Stuff is happening not every day, every hour. And I, you know, get it. We'll show you a video of how to do that. Um, if you want to get our books, uh, Israel and the Church, the day approaching or the last hour, find it on our website, beholdisrael.org. Let me give you the ironic blessing. And then we're going to say goodbye. Yevarechech Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai pana v'lecha v'yichuneka, Yisa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. The peace that can come from the Prince of Peace, who is the Lord of Peace, who can give you peace now and forever, here and everywhere, not limited in time, or in place, because that's the one we serve. We thank you, and we pray that in the name of that Lord of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Watch this video of how to get Telegram Messenger. Follow me there. Subscribe to us. And I love you. God bless you. And Shalom from Galilee. Bye-bye. Join the Amir Sarfati and Behold Israel channel.